Hi guys, if you've been lucky enough to stumble across this plumberparts.co.uk video all about how to pressurise and boost your hot water supply if you've got a gravity fed hot water system, then great, we're gonna get around to that any minute now. Before we do, please subscribe to our videos and I hope this video gives you a bit of an idea about how to do it. Anyway, thanks ever so much for watching guys, and hold tight. Plumberparts.co.uk, home of Find Your Plumber. So then guys, my bro Mick has asked me to come round and have a look at the problem he's got here with his hot water flow. He's got a gravity fed system, so he's got about 40 gallon tank up in the loft. He's got a standard 900 by 450 wide indirect cylinder in his airing cupboard, and it's a really, really standard system. This is the flow out of his cold tap. This is off the mains, so that's nice and good. But at the moment, his hot tap I think you'd agree, it's pretty lacklustre. So I spoke to the guys over at Salamander and said, look, is there a way we can fix this problem that we've got here without like having to change this whole system, without having to put an unvented cylinder in or something like that? Is there anything we can do? And they said, of course there is, James. Use a CT force pump. So I've got one here. We've obviously got um, our Salamander pumps, bits and bobs. Do not fit the pump directly onto mains water supply. Do not allow solder flux in there. Don't let water more than 65 degrees in. All the usual stuff. Just make sure you look at the manufacturer's guidance for this. First thing I want to point out is obviously See braided hoses, uh, they've got their valves on them already, integral valves, but also brass nuts for the connection onto the shower pump. Then we've got this diddy little pump. And there we go, there's the solution to mix problem just sat there, right there now. As you can see, we've got a standard plug in there. All the inlets and outlets have been nicely protected using these lovely rubber bungs here. Also supplied are the rubber feet to stop any kind of noise coming through, but that shouldn't be a great problem because these salamander pumps only give out maximum of 49 decibels of noise, so they're really, really quiet as well. They've got a brass impeller in them as well, so they're really, really sturdy. They're not gonna have a problem pumping around any water at a high rate, uh, and they're just really, really well built. So we've got the solution to mix problem here. Let's pop upstairs and have a look at the airing cupboard and actually see how we're gonna fit one of these in and plan out the job. You keep on giving me the whole Oh, uh, D, D, you know you wish you made your mind. Right then, so here we are, the airing cupboard. This has got to be a first in plumbing history because Mick has actually already cleaned out the airing cupboard for us. As if I wanted to work in there. Mental, isn't it? Right then guys, so here's our airing cupboard and this is where we're gonna be doing most of our work for this job here. So the next thing to do on a job like this is just to ascertain what pipes go where. Obviously we've got a hot tank here. This pipe coming out of the top here is our hot feed off to our taps. This pipe here that goes up off this T here is the expansion and vent pipe that goes up to a crook in the tank up in the loft. And this pipe that comes down here is the hot water draw off pipe that goes off to all your taps. Now this pipe at the back here is the cold water feed from the tank to the hot tank here. So the first thing we're going to need to do is to turn that off. And then what we're gonna do is open all the hot taps around the house as well and dissipate all the pressure. If you can't find a valve that's on this pipe here that runs down to your tank, you're best off turning off the mains water itself, but it's gonna take a little bit longer for you to drain out the hot water tank, because often you'll have a 40 gallon cold water tank in the loft as well to drain out too. Whatever happens, before you move on to the next stage, make sure that you're happy that the water is turned off and isolated, and when you cut any of these pipes, you're not gonna have a flood on your hands. Likewise, always refer to the manufacturer's instructions when installing one of these pumps, because sometimes certain types of installations won't work with them. Right, next up, because we're gonna be working in this area here, uh, we need to knock out all these panels that are in it, and these are often sort of witty nearly done by chippies over the years. One thing I would do so if I was you is just number them one to whatever along the back and always along one side so you know exactly how they all go back in at the end. It's always a good idea just to open up this strain cock just down here, not only just to make sure that it works, but also just drain off five litres off the top of the tank so we can get the water level down to about here. That means no water is going to be coming out of the outlet there or disturbing us while we're trying to do any soldering work later on in this job. Now the next thing I recommend you do when you're fitting any kind of pump is to put a flange in. Now this is a salamander flange. What they do is promote aerated water to go up the vent pipe and not down any of the pipes that might feed your pump. The way they do that is the pump feed comes out of here a lot lower down in the tank. So imagine this is just sitting there like that. Our hot water for our pump will be going in these holes here and just come out of this outlet right here. But any water that might be aerated, that might have air in it that can damage the pump, will actually go up around it and out of the top of our salamander flange just like that. So I'm gonna get on whip that out now. You can have a nice close up look, but before we do, let's get some light on the situation. Now you should be able to see a lot easier.
Right, I hope for some of you guys seeing here, this plumbing, good malarkey, sometimes isn't easy. And that was very difficult for us to get off. If you find, if you're not happy doing this particular bit, okay, just don't, okay, because you can easily fracture a tank here doing this. You need to know all the little tricks of the trade to be able to do this safely without there being any problems. I think now while we're here, just get this bit cleaned down, try and make sure you don't get too many bits and pieces like foam stuck in the tank. Right then, now what I've got to do is actually prepare this little flange to go in here. Now, Salamander send these out to go to uh, inch male and also inch female. So as we've got to go onto a little inch female here, we're going to whip this bush off and that just gets discarded. But you might need the other type. Also, we've got two fibre washers on here. Leave one on this and also, if you want to, pop a little bit of jointing compound on here and also maybe a bit of PTFE or hemp and paste or Loctite, whatever you guys usually use to seal up a thread like that. Uh, I don't usually use PTFE on this, but because this fitting was so hard to get off and I'm worried about damaging the tank, I want to use something that's not going to clag it up too much on the thread when it's doing up. So you should be able to pop this on here now. And now I'm going to lightly just give this a little nip up. Now that we've got that in, what we're going to do first is link up our vent pipe and our expansion pipe. Let's do that by cutting an elbow just here, running that along there, and then elbowing down into this. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a small stub of 22 mil copper and just run it out here, put a stub on it, and then turn the water back on. The reason for that is, is I can then test this joint here for leaks, make sure that that's nice and sealed. And if it isn't, all we need to do then is just slacken this off, just take it out quickly and then redo our thing and tighten it up. If we'd have done all our pipe work for our new pump and everything here and then found out that this leaked at a later stage, that'd be really annoying because that would mean we'd have to do a huge change to any of the pipe work in the future. Right then, a few minutes later, we had a small problem with the top of the flange there. We had a little bit of a leak, but that's part of plumbing. Sometimes you have these little problems, you've got to get over them. So it took us a little bit of time. So when you're always thinking about putting flanges or working on old bits of equipment, then you need to dig deep sometimes to get over it. But anyway, we've popped our valve in. We've got these two bits tested here. We know now that we can leave our pipe in that orientation. Now, all I need to do is figure out where I'm going to site my pump and get it installed physically. We've got an inlet and an outlet hose. These two just like this. There's no difference between them. They've both got our isolating valves on there. Then what we have is one of these is a gauze filter. It just looks like that. And that is going to pop in on the inlet side of the pump. So you're going to know which arrow that is. It's that arrow there that's pointing into the pump impeller. You just be able to do them up hand tight like so. So I'm going to sit it just here. We can still turn this drain off on and off then. There's no problems there. So all we need to do now is get our pipe work up and over into this piece here. This is our outlet pipe here. And then all we need to do is get our feed pipe down here, then we can shut these two valves off, get the water back on and test for leaks. Then guys, there you go, the beast is in. I'm just gonna have a big clear up now, loads of stuff to get rid of. But Mick is very happy with his new pump, aren't you Mick? Very. So then we've got our new CT4 sitting in here now. I've just got it plugged in at the moment to a uh, extension lead. We're gonna get the spark in here to actually wire this up properly because I don't have a plug in here yet. Uh, if you have a plug in there, great. If you don't and you're not competent with electrics or anything like that, get a spark in to come and do it for you. As you may have noticed here, we've just got these two just like that, so there's our feed in. We've popped it underneath this shelf here because Mick still wants to be able to put all his like, bed clothes and things like that. We could have been total scumbags and just run it straight up there and then that would have completely gotten rid of a whole shelf of them to use. So the moment of truth is, is just to pop downstairs and have a look at the difference and compare from how we filmed the hot flow before and after. Also, I'm going to get the camera up right close as well so you can actually have a bit of a listen to see how quiet they are too. So, the moment of truth. If we have a look, this is how it looked like earlier on. Not great, kind of piddly. So let's see how it is now. Pump takes a second to cut in, but I'm sure you'll find it's miles better. Have a look at this. Boom. Absolutely brilliant. Miles better, flows great. So you can just see, it cuts off great. That pump's just cutting in and out upstairs. Not a care in the world. And we're getting warm now as well. How about that? Lovely and warm. I think you'd agree that that was pretty quiet. 
So we've tested it obviously on all the other outlets as well, and we've also tested it with multiple outlets open. So I think guys, you've seen how easy it is to install one of these Salamander CT4 shower pumps. How about having the opportunity to win one of them? Well, it's pretty easy, and I'm sure most of you season plumber parts subscribers know the routine by now. All you need to do is go over to our Twitter or our Facebook, like and follow us and share or retweet this post that's appearing next to me right now on either of our Twitter and Facebook pages, and you've entered. You will then have the chance to win one of two CT Force pumps, and make sure you look at either the tweet or the Facebook post to make sure when the competition actually ends. So then guys, I hope you've enjoyed watching today's Plumber Parts video. I hope it's given you a bit of a better idea about how you can actually pressurize your hot water system if you're on a gravity fed system like this one here. Some people are completely exacerbated with the problem. Anyway guys, until our next video, remember to hold tight. See you soon.